Hello beautiful internet family, Dan here from dancetube.tv and today we're checking out the newly released DJI Air 2S and we're checking out the slow-mo capabilities of this newly released drone from DJI. If you're new around these parts, then you can expect brutally honest tech reviews on the channel, and I've made it my mission to help technology enthusiasts unlock their creative potential with tech. So in today's video, we're checking out, like I said just before, if you forgot, we're checking out the slow-mo capabilities from the newly released DJI Air 2S. This drone is so much fun to fly. It has really everything you would expect from it, but is this the best slow motion that you can get on a drone? So first things first, all of the footage you'll see here was shot in 1080p at 120 frames per second. Now that's fine, but you have no other options. You literally click on the slow-mo option and it's a whole other setting, a whole other menu basically. You've got video and then you've got slow-mo. So you'd think, okay, cool, there's probably going to be some variety, some options in here. No, that's not the case. It's literally just 1080p, 120 frames per second. So I would have liked to have seen some other options in there. The fact that it's a whole other menu just for one option is a little bit odd to me, but that's fine. The other thing you'll notice though is that it's got a major crop factor. So when you go from video to slow motion, you'll see it really does crop that image in. And I noticed that, yes, it's 1080p, so obviously the quality is not going to be as nice as 4K, but that quality dip is quite noticeable here. When you drop to 1080p, 120 frames per second, it isn't the crispiest footage that you can get. It really isn't that amazing, which is kind of annoying because the slow-mo functionality is great. It films straight away in 1080p, 120 frames per second. It puts it into slow-mo for you. You don't have to do anything in post-production, which is really handy, but you know, that dip in quality is noticeable and it's fine. You can use it for the most part, but it's not that gorgeous. I tried to get as much movement as I possibly could. When I was at the Gold Coast, I got some nice shots of the waves crashing in, people walking along the beach, and those nice tall buildings, but there wasn't anything too drastic, you know, there wasn't any crazy movement, so it's kind of hard to gauge that slow motion, but I think it still gives a nice effect with the waves crashing in. I then also got some nice shots of boats coming in and out near where I live in Manly, and it's really cool. Again, like movement isn't too drastic. It would have been cool if there were a lot of jet skis and speedboats and lots of fast movements, but it wasn't crazy because they were obviously coming into an area they had to slow down. So you kind of get some cool dynamic movements as I'm kind of panning around them and circling them and trying to get some nice movements as they're coming in and leaving. But because it's quite slow, it doesn't truly give you the essence of that slow motion. Obviously you want that fast movement to then slow it down to give you that cool effect. But I think it still gives a really nice effect here. And nice and early, like when I launched the drone, there were three boats that were leaving together. So I got some cool movements here, just going by the side of them, you know, almost moving with them as the three boats were in the frame. And I think that looks really unique. You know, you get the essence of that nice slow motion as I'm moving with them. And the fact that they were all at that kind of different pacing, I think created a nice dynamic movement to it and um, really cool. I, I love using slow motion footage. It's really annoying that the footage isn't 100% crispy. It's not to my crispy like in here. It's not that crispy skin that you would want, but it is still pretty cool here, I think. And one thing that I did notice that it kind of annoys me a little bit, for whatever reason, like these drones are so powerful now, it can't track while it's shooting slow motion. To me, that would be amazing. Like to be able to have a bike or a car or like a speedboat or something that's moving really fast, even a person running really fast and to have that tracking them in slow motion would be next level. But for whatever reason, the frame rates are too high. It just won't let you do it. So that's a major limitation here. And obviously the quality is another limitation. The fact that it's only 1080p, you can't bump that quality up again, which I guess we're waiting for now in the drone space. And that will probably come with the Mavic 3 Pro where it has some crazy options for slow motion. I'm sure that's coming. Um, but you can see here as one of the boats here starts to pick up, I'm like 480 meters away and I'm kind of getting that nice circle movement. That's all manual because obviously I can't track anything in these slow motion options, but I think that looks really cool because the boat started to pick up and you know, I've got that nice smooth movement with the ripples of the water. 
that's where slow motion really stands out, where you can get some fast moving dynamic movements that just look really unique and I love that. I stumbled across a ton of birds that were just flying through the sky. I don't know whether they were trying to fish together or whether they were just trying to trip out my drone. I have no idea what was happening here, but there's a glimpse here of the birds just flying in a pack. They're just charging. They're going really fast and doing crazy movements. So that's something that looks really cool in slow-mo and it's something a little bit unique, I guess. If that was just a normal shot, it would be gone within a few seconds. You're done. That's the only bit of footage that's usable. But to have it in slow motion gives you a lot more um, variety here, a lot more you know options and chance to play around with the footage. Obviously, you can't do much in post-production because the quality is so low, but to have something that you know might be 15 seconds instead of two seconds is super usable and something that you can chuck in as some nice B-roll there. I really want to do this again, another test where I've got a lot of fast moving either birds or boats or cars or whatever that may be to make it a bit more unique here. But I think this test is still pretty cool though. You get the essence of what the slow motion is capable of doing. You get to see what the quality is like and now you know some of the limitations behind it. So you have no other options for frame rates or resolution Solution. You also get that major crop from normal video to then slow motion. There's some big cropping that goes on there. Um, and then on top of that, you can't even track anything that's moving. So you have to do everything manually, which is fun for me because I kind of like to do that anyway. I like to get used to movements without relying on the drone. So that gives you a chance to kind of get some unique shots without relying on the software, which I think is really important and a lot of fun. But we've got some other shots here of some birds flying into this nice little island. It's really unique. The colors are quite unique here as well. And just that movement as they fly in, I think looks really unique in slow motion. Something that wouldn't really give that effect at all when you're shooting normally, because it's just nothing exciting. The, the shot's done within a second, you know? But to have that slow motion and to have a few more seconds, I think gives that dynamic look to it. And it's something nice to kind of chuck in with your other footage. So basically that's kind of it for the Air 2S slow-mo options. So this is definitely not the best slow motion I've seen on a drone. It's just too limited in my opinion. You know, you've got 1080p 120 frames per second and that's it. You can't track anything. You can't play with it at all. It's just, that's it. Here you go, here's your slow motion. Have fun kind of thing and that's it. Um, the other thing that's kind of a major limitation, you can't track anything. So if I wanted to track you know, a boat that's moving really fast or a car or a person that's running, someone on a mountain bike, anything like that, you've just got to do it manually, which is fine for some people, but a lot of people that's really limited and you won't be able to use the slow motion at all, which I think sucks. Like, you know, these drones are so advanced now, the technology is so amazing. You would think that you could track something at 1080p 120 frames per second. I don't know, let me know in the comments below whether you think this is actually a realistic limitation or just a software limitation. And they're probably holding off for the Mavic 3 Pro to add that later on, who knows. But I think it's just a very basic, limited slow motion option. So the DJI Air 2S is a really cool drone and I think the slow motion is just something they've chucked in there. Nothing crazy exciting. Definitely not something that you should be buying this drone for. Like I said, the 1080p footage, it looks fine, but it's not amazing. You lose a lot of that clarity, a lot of that sharpness. So really basic stuff here, guys. Bit of a disappointing one. I was expecting a little bit more, but that's fine. These things happen. You win some, you lose some. Have a great day though. I will chat to you in the next video. I've got some really cool videos coming to the channel very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy some more of this cool slow-mo footage here and I'll chat to you in the next one. Peace.